you need to be able to translate whatever your ever mission you're on to your wife. You can't just be on some arrogant like woman, I'm doing this for you, you know. Shut up. <laughs> just just shut up. You know what? Like you can't be on that. So like questions like what was going through your mind? I just think, huh? You know, the content could be gold, mm. but mm. tone is wrong, it's over. You have to match, you have to look at where you are in your relationship and stuff. And also just realise, you know, you're not 17 anymore. If I was wrong, I'm the one picking up the phone. If she's wrong, I'm the one picking up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you've been in a relationship that hasn't been so positive, at least you can bring some positive experience to your new relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? At least you know yeah. what you don't want to stand for, what you won't do again. Welcome to another episode of Daz Divulge. We've got a very special guest with us today. You know, my longtime friend, someone who's, you know, let's say been with me through the journey. Ads, how you doing, bro? Good, man. Thanks, man. Hey, it's a privilege yeah. to be on here, you know. That's it. That's oh, it. Listen, Good to Ads, see you. Ads, I've had to, you, I won't lie, you're putting, you're putting Daz to shame out here, bro. Trust me. You, you're, you're leaving us with no excuses. Let me let me go through let me go through your CV. So Ade is a program manager in financial services, founder of Circulate, which seeks to empower black men and the BAME community in the corporate world, co-founder of Mac Jonathan London, a bespoke suit company, which made my wedding suit absolutely bad boy suit. Tier anyone one that don't anyone that don't know <laughs> needs to holler at Ade, but I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah man. Music director at his church, Christ Church Tabernacle. <laughs> Father of two and husband to one, just in case anyone, anybody wanted to know. Hey, As, what one, you know. What's hey. happening, my bro? What's Let me just really play, a church or Christ Church Tabernacle, for, for they come for me, boy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 but no, I'm good, man. Hey, I'm alive. I always tell people, when I say how you doing, I'm, I'm alive, you know. That's the end thing yeah. today, boy. That's, <laughs> you know that's, what it, saying? that's it, that's it. We've got a life, man. We've got a life. You have to celebrate it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Stu, what's up? How you guys doing, man? Yeah, we're good. Good, brother. Good. Alive, like you said. And carrying on. That's it. Everything's good. Everything is all good. All right, we're now today. You know, getting to the important stuff first. People, thank you for the support. The last few episodes, we're loving it. We'd like you to like, share, and subscribe. Send this video. Send the channel out to loads of people. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. Follow us and subscribe to us and let us know. Let us know what you want to hear. Um, today, we've got a good one. Um, three married men in the building. We're going to talk about how <laughs> we're going to talk about dealing with conflict in the marriage. Ooh. And we, we, Ooh. Rap, we rapidly name it Final Conflict. Those from the South East will know Final Conflict. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it won't. It's going to go over some people's heads, but those in hopefully, the South East will Hopefully know. after people listen to this, it will be their final conflict they ever have. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Trust me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But no, we're going we're gonna to touch on we're going to touch on conflict in the marriage. You know, these things are bound to happen. And why does it happen? And um, what, what causes it? How do you deal with it? Um, and actually, quite frankly, what are you doing to resolve it? You know, the whole talking and the whole talking before you, before you go to bed and start fresh the next day, it's not for everyone. A few couples it works for, not for everyone. So, mm. so let's, let's, let's jump into it. Ade, how do you deal with it? All right, conflict to resolution. Um, it's a big topic, isn't it? Um, I think the first thing to do is talk about myself. I think that's the only right thing to do um, when it comes to talking about conflict. And so really it's a big thing. You know, conflict is is the difference between staying married and not, I would say, um, these days as well, spe- specifically. And um, I think there's one thing I can definitely say um, that is 100% true. And I think I only ever saw my parents physically, not physically, let me take that word back, but I only <laughs> saw, saw my parents kind of have like a, a conflict only a couple of times. Um, mm. So it's either we were sleeping for most of it uh, when they decided to, or they'll just kind of like um, deal with it in a way that it's just like, yeah, let's just talk about this later. Mm. Um, it's either that or they probably just didn't care about the issue that much to so have that much conflict. Mm. But my upbringing was kind of like, something happens and just keep it moving really um so that 
for me, I, uh, like from when I was young, I find it so hard to keep a grudge. Like from even like school days, son, someone's done something to you and you want to hold that grudge. Mm. Like you want to you wanna hold it, but it's not really there. But if not because of peer pressure, they're trying to egg man on and saying, bro, are you, you going to have it? But from <laughs> more time by the next day, I'm good kind of thing, innit? Mm. So, um, but in a marriage, it can be different, innit? Because um, you, have, you have two individuals that are coming together from two different worlds and who do things differently. And so um, I might be someone who doesn't necessarily want to talk about the situation and then just kind of just keep it moving. Mm. Um, but that, that causes like bigger issues down the line because you're not resolved a particular issue. You just kind of sit under the carpet and think things are fine. And so initially when I would try and maybe come back after the conflict, my wife would be like, nah. And I couldn't really kind of comprehend it because it's not really something that I dealt with before. But, you know, with my wife, if there's something that happens, you know, we need to kind of address that that situation um, because she, um, she's a person that would like to understand the root cause of what happened mm. or, you know, my, my, my thinking. So, like, questions like, what was going through your mind? I just think, huh? <laughs> like, it's just a, it's, so you know like are you, are you asking if I'm crazy you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like that's how I literally used to take it in it but obviously over time I, I started to realise that she's actually trying to map like what trying to get to the root to the root cause yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah but obviously yeah. initially as a man and as an individual you've got that defence just like what do you mm-hmm. mean like are you, are you blaming me kind of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. you kind of palm <laughs> the whole situation off and then so if you're not talking for two weeks um yeah. <laughs> it's one of those ones where it's like <laughs> there's so many things that you, you could avoid but you just your pride and your ego mm-hmm. your lack of understanding uh, just so many factors just play um, and so actually I remember before we got married if we had a a, 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 a dispute or a conflict it would mess me at work like mm-hmm. I'd be staring at my screen for a minute yeah. for like two three hours just at the same screen might have written one sentence and I used to work <laughs> in a in a place where I had to kind of like write a lot at that time so mm. I used to be staring at my screen because I just couldn't really understand <laughs> it and so um, the typical traits of like women which was like maybe to like try and beg it or come back that's my wife didn't have that she would mm. easily not talk to me for a minute and mm. so if I was wrong, I'm the one picking up the phone. If she's wrong, I'm the one picking up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn somehow, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, no, but so so it was mad because I just used to think like it should be equal. Like if you're wrong, like you should be picking up the phone, isn't it? But so it it, it kind of it spun me for a minute, and I used to think, hmm? what's going on here? Kind of thing, like mm. what's happening. Um, and so I had to sort of like. I think nine times out of ten, if there's a beef or if there's a conflict, like it will kind of be myself to kind of initiate, kind of trying to beg it back. Mm. Um, and so it used to mess me up individually in the, in the beginning because I used to think, like, is there no value in trying to, if you've done something wrong, like you can come through and stuff. And it wasn't that. It's just more of a case of that's just the nature of who we are as individuals. Um but then someone said something to me, which is really quite key. And, and it's like uh, the, the analogy that I'll put, like you would never expect a goalkeeper to, to be a striker in it. Like he's going to always mm. be in goal every single time he gets picked, regardless of if the game is going good or if the game is going bad. Mm. And so I realised that my role in always trying to resolve it or trying to initiate it is not a bad thing. That's just who I am as an individual. Mm. And so realising that was kind of like a, a, a penny drop moment. It was just like, right, okay, so... Yeah, um, that's just how it may have to run sometimes, you know. That's just my part in this relationship. And so, but it takes a level of maturity because sometimes you just want to be like, no, nah, man, I went wrong. Mm. I was say, it wasn't me. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? But, um, and so that's that's how conflict is. Obviously, we're going to get into it, obviously, as we could continue. But, you know, there's, 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 there's so many things that, that can come from conflict. And I think communication is key. Um, when it comes to conflict resolution um, and we'll talk about what communication means body language um, 
your idea of how you think things should go versus the reality of how it's actually going. <laughs> um, mm. You know, one person saying one thing but meaning the other. It's just so many things can come up. You know, like the natural instinct is to, if you're feeling a particular way, just to start insulting, isn't it? Mm. But, you know, you just, you, you, <laughs> you know, like, if you think about it, as human beings, we have to be accountable to every word that's spoken, whether um, out of anger or, or, or out of joy or whatever. Like, we just have to think about what we're saying and when we're saying it. So, yeah, there's, the conflict thing is, is a deep thing. Like, what I've been been in this thing for a couple of years now, <laughs> uh, going on seven. You only get a year so, old. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> couple of years, yeah, okay. Uh, go, going on seven now, but, you know. So, so I'm, I'm learning every day. Do you understand? Like, I definitely look back at year one. I think yeah, that was a joke, man. Year one was was silly. Like that was ridiculous for me to think that that was mm-hmm. ever going to happen. Like in that way, in it. And I'm sure when I look when I'm when mm. I'm in year twenty, looking back as well, I look at year year seven and say, yeah, of course, well, you're the people, Listen, as a man, I feel like we're constantly in in all areas. We're constantly trying to grow. These three men on this this podcast, I can say for anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and being a husband is just it's just one of those things. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't think you ever let's say reach the pinnacle and say, you know. I'm here now. I'm the I'm the perfect husband. It's something we're all working on yeah, every single day. <laughs> constant development, mm. constantly constant, trying yeah. to understand. Because I think there's a time and place where you know where you have to bring in bi- biological makeup of the woman and the man, and it's trying trying to understand and just accept that we're just two different creatures. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or mm. and although sometimes we may think something should be equal and this is how I expect her to come to me if she's done something wrong or whatever you just kind of realise early on that you know what it's not going to happen like that <laughs> you know what I'm saying we, we're going to handle things and look at, look at things in a different way I mean both of you guys know me like I've been with my missus for 16 years now Man. been with her since college this year I'm saying <laughs> and from the outside, you know, it looks, you know, childhood sweetheart. Oh, that's sweet. Like all of that kind of stuff. But really and truly, if I'm honest, we've had to basically freestyle from being so young and trying to figure out what it is to be in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you get with someone who, and both of us actually haven't had any real experience of being in a proper relationship and you're both trying to figure things out along the way. And you're bumping heads at every single step, like you're you're breaking up every month over stupid stuff. Oh, what you said that to me, yo? Let's break up. <laughs> like it sounds, it's going it to break. Childish, yeah, like it. as where I am now, it sounds childish. But that was that's what was happening early on because we just didn't understand what it took to be in a relationship, and we weren't mature enough together to work certain things out. Like my missus was more mature than me. I I, I accept that, but. You know when you're you're young, you're a teenager, and you're just not you're just not in the headspace to really take on certain things. And yeah, I think, that's yeah. What, I think uh, we're, we're just different when we when we when we, when you when you first get into a relationship at that age as well, you're bringing like you said zero experience. Yeah, you've met girls before, you've gone dating, you're linking back in that day anyway. Like that's what you've been doing before, but no real. Okay, how do I actually work with this? How do I work with this person? 100%. And I think Adi, you said something just now. Like the, the way you deal with conflict is how you used to deal with it in the playground, or how you might have dealt with conflict with your mm. siblings inside the house. That's completely different when you're dealing with like your partner. Um, it's just it's just not it's nowhere near the same. It can't it can't be matched, you know. So there's a lot of learning along the way. There's there's a whole heap of. I, I, you said something just now, and he made and he, and he made me think. You know, you expect you know I've plenty of times I expect my wife to. To think about what she's actually said. Have you actually said that? And you think it's gonna, like, how, how does how does that actually work? Because actually, on the flip side, when you've done it in the same way or to the same effect, mate, they said they want explanations about how you know, how, how how you're respecting them and and, and your choice of words. But it As works said, ways. What, what think, was going through your mind at that stage? Like, what was <laughs> what was going through your mind exactly? Exactly. And to be exactly. honest, it's it's the, the, the real answer. The real answer was nothing. 
<laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It was, like, it was literally, and, she'll, and if you ever say that, it's like, yeah, there you go. And it's just like, <laughs> but I mean, uh, it's true. No, but Ryan, you, Ryan, you said something, yeah, and, and it kind of struck a chord with me. And, and I think it, if you, if you look at the age gap, like, uh, I don't, uh, it's true, I'm, I'm not too familiar to, to update me, but like, I think mine is a year. Uh, I think I think Ryan, yours, your, you guys are in the same. We're in it all in the same year, in it. So yeah, there ain't that much less. age gap. Like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you think about traditionally, back in the day, you had that five to ten year age gap where the man's mm. way older, and actually, it's still quite prevalent that a lot of women want want older men. So you have to mm. think about mm. uh, the women that we're with here. Yeah, probably very much so. Were were more were, were more mature. Mature, than we, yeah, hands down. We yeah. were in it. Mm. And and actually, what you will see is it, the like the ones that are five years older will have a different dynamic of conflict mm. than maybe someone of who our age who's close. So really, when you're younger, you might as well be rocking in the playground with, with mm. your partner because that's how <laughs> that's how the conflicts can get in. It's just like, you, it's <laughs> like bro, I'll be honest, bro. I lo- we laugh about <laughs> we laugh about some of the arguments we had back in the day. Like back in the day, it used to be literally, if she sneezed the wrong, oh, you know what? Let's break up. Let's let's go on yeah, a break. Yeah, and it's yeah. like I look at it now, and it's like, what were you talking about? Do you see what I'm saying? But because I was so young, I didn't have no experience. I didn't have, and you know what? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, even if you've been in a relationship that hasn't been so positive, at least you can bring some positive experience to your new relationship you know what I'm saying at least you know yeah. what you don't want to stand for what you won't do again I'm li- yeah. we're literally going off trial and error here do you know what I'm saying yeah. at 19 years old yeah like you don't, you don't know 19, 16, 19, 16 years 17 years old, years old. Like, <laughs> like literally just yeah. freestyling all the way through do you know what I'm saying like and really yeah. thinking that we knew anything you know what I'm saying but mm. you know when I look back on it now I I can actually see that one thing we took out of it was having patience and having perseverance to to stick with each other through all of those times because as a 17 year old boy you're bound to main, make mistakes do you know what i'm saying you're mm-hmm. bound to do things that are silly that are not a, a serious partner would do you know what i'm saying but you know what looking back on it like my missus had the patience to kind of stick with me and say all right cool you know what she could obviously see something in what we had to say, okay, cool, this is going to be a long-term thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting as well, you know, like how how it started when you're younger, even just a few years in, so into your 20s now, you know, going to late 20s, you notice the conflict. It, it, came, it It's a bit more articulate. And actually that mm. sometimes, that, that pisses some people off as well, actually. Mm. They, they, they don't like the fact you're using certain words. They don't like the fact yeah. that you're not shouting. So now yeah. when you're not shouting, you know, before it might be that you're shouting <laughs> and you're not even coming across well. Right, because like we said, I've said it a million times on other podcasts. Delivery is everything. Right, <laughs> yeah. don't matter the content. Facts. Content could Facts. be there, 100%. but delivery is everything. The tone right? and everything. Yeah, hundred percent. Tone. You know, the content could be gold, mm. but mm. tone is wrong. It's over. But then you go from not shouting, and now you're coming, calm voice. You're laying your facts down. Now you're kind of being condescending, and now you, know, you <laughs> think you're a bit smart. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so in a way, in a way, you can't win. In a way, you can't win, and I think you have to you have to match. You have to look at where you are in your relationship and stuff, and also just realize, you know, you're not 17 anymore. You're not 22 anymore. You're not 25. You're not 28. We're in our 30s mm. now. Like let's let's at least try and look at that in this marriage and accept that in this marriage there are going to be things that we agree on, things we disagree on, and where we don't, let's come with a a bit of a strategy about how we come into the middle. 100. percent because I, I think if you can come with a strategy with every conflict, and I think there's nuances, but if you come with some kind of strategy about how you're going to deal with it, understand that, you know what, for the last 10 years, we argue the same and we stop talking for two weeks all the time. That gets boring at some point and you want to you want to stop that at some point. I think you're, you know, I think you're 100% right, bro. I think, you know what, coming from a household where I've seen divorce, you know what I'm saying? I've seen my parents get divorced. I think that may be, has had an effect on me as well. I think I've seen what can happen when all forms of communication breaks down, respect goes out the window and it's just a free for all. You know what I'm saying? There's not even no, there's not any kind of 
it's, there's not any kind of attempt to to try and get a resolution. It's just attack, attack, attack. Everyone's attacking each other. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And I've seen the effect that has not just financially, but mentally, spiritually, every, every kind of way possible on the people who are married and the, the people around them. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think there's somewhere in my head that thinks, do you know what? I don't really want that to be me, you know? And mm. I know most 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 things build up over time. You see what I'm saying? I think every argue, serious argument I've been in with my missus, most of them have just been a build up of things gone unsaid. You know what I'm saying? Things maybe I've said, I've said, oh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But really and truly, deep down, it's burning me. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> that's where I think men need to get, we need to get better at communicating certain things in a in a more grown up way in it and say, you know what? I wasn't really happy with that, you know? You know what I'm saying? Instead of letting it build up, letting it build up to where it's like, okay, the first chance you get, everything comes out at once. And Bang. you just come out with a machine gun and start spraying every, everyone inside. You know what I'm saying? The kids even get it. Like, everyone, everyone kids, gets it. Yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone nah, I, inside. What you're saying is, 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 is actually, is, is like some amazing insight. I'm not, I, don't, I don't think I've ever had an open conversation with someone that would talk about, you know, what they saw from their parents. And so, mm. so thank you for sharing that. But mm. it's so deep what you're talking about because I think how we attack or how we approach conflict is all going to be based on how we grew up. Do you understand? Like, and so I think one of the things that is definitely key in, in what you said is um, the communication breaks down. And so I, I think one of the fundamental bedrocks of resolving conflict is being open. Mm. Um and or having the trust in your relationship that you can be open without being judged. Because like, as much as we feel like marriage is a safe haven, a lot of people are in their marriage and trapped. They're not even able to really speak out. They're just living. They just yeah. wake up. They, mm. They're happy to go to work early because they can quickly miss out on the misses. Because <laughs> they pick up a bit of overtime. Pick up a bit of overtime. You know what I'm saying? Come back late. Just quickly quick munch and then into the bed. You know what I'm saying? Pick up Saturday work and that. <laughs> yes. And then... <laughs> and that's not that's not resolving conflicts that's avoiding conflict and I think mm. conflict yeah. is inevitable in marriage isn't it? and I think once you can kind of like say okay conflict is going to happen then it's all about okay how do I get to a place where we can resolve it so I think having an open conversation with your partner in it to the place where your communication style is in a place where you're not trying to just batter them do you understand mm. and actually sometimes I think hmm okay I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give it two hours before I say this because then I can come from my angle as like, oh, babe, you know that? Like, just a couple of hours ago, something, something, something. And then we can we can kind of have it in a forum where it will be, I'm hoping I can I can create a, a conducive, conducive atmosphere for us to have that conversation. Mm. But if I'm just coming on tops and I'm just like blazing with fire guns and everything, the first thing that happens is your defences go up. So you're not actually going to really hear what the person's saying. Exactly. In my view, you're actually just going to be like, here we go again. So it's just like, there's no value in what you're going to say, number one. Number two, there isn't actually then any communication as to how you move forward. So you're not resolving the conflict. You're just mm -hmm. raising an alarm again. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's almost like pressing an alarm button and it keeps going off. Or you put, keep putting up your, your, your conflict on snooze. You actually mm -hmm. need to turn it off, innit? And that's my thing. And so um, one thing that's really key i think in in trying to resolve value um, and res resolving conflicts is understanding values yeah mm -hmm. um and so only recently i mean like recently i i put out like a message up on on one of my like social media statuses to say um the key thing is you have to manage your own expectations right and when you when i say managing your own, your expectations like not putting too much expectation or or giving too much um importance to someone to the place where if they disappoint you it messes mm. you up because if you manage your expectations you, you protect your heart in doing so what, what do i mean by that so I, I mean like so for example i might say but it's your duty to do that to my wife in it but if i manage my expectations to say she should do that but if she doesn't i just pick it up mm. i'm going to be less likely to be vexed number one um, and if I pick it up a couple of times, three, four times, I can just kind of say, oh, look, babe, look, like, this is my, I think you're supposed to do this, but you're not doing it. What's the deal? Like, are you happy to do it? Or do we need to be looking at an alternative kind of thing? I'll, I'll use, and it's not necessarily my, my example, but I'll use, for example, um, 
cleaning the house. I can that 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 would probably be a mad one for for lots of people or laundry like <laughs> that can cook. <laughs> hey. He knew what he was doing there. He knew what he was doing. Hey. Hey. He knew what he was doing. He's laundry. Yeah. Yeah. I saw what he did. I see what he did. I see what he did there. I see what he did. I see what he did. I see what he did. That thing, yeah, having spoken to quite a few hey. people, yeah. <laughs> That thing can cause a complete ruckus in the household, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And it goes from how you deal with your laundry to how the laundry should be done. And and so if there is an expectation, there could be for one, you could just have a real conversation and say, look, okay, we're both working. We're just not going to be able to just do it in the way we need to. So we either just collect everything, go to the laundry, and they just do it for us, or we need to work out a system. But trust me, there's little things that can cause a complete, Madness in your household. But I, I feel that I feel never the big bits. I feel that is the little <clears throat> things, though. It's the little things yeah. that add up. Yeah. It's the little things like, as you said, housework. That someone might be doing something, you know, that they're not re- they don't really want to do, and they're just building up, building up, building up a a kind of anger inside them to where it gets too much, and then it explodes into something else that doesn't need to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I do, you know, this I do, yeah. This is why I've always no, said, God. like, for me. A marriage is like a business. Like you, you have to. It might sound a bit, you know, rigid, and but you have to run it like it is your business. Like you have your tasks, you have your jobs, you you have meetings about who's doing what this week or who's who's Sunday night. Let's come together. Okay, what's the plan? Especially if you've got kids in the household, like you have to have some kind of organization in my eyes. Anyway, that's what works for me. Maybe some people, it's different, but that's what works for me. Like I mean. The thing is, when I think about it, some of the um, businesses that I've started and whatever, any complications that come up in the, in those businesses, well, straight away we have a meeting. We have mm. a meeting. We we try to resolve. We don't hold it in and say, oh, you know what, like whatever, like getting our feelings. We try and resolve it. If me and Stuart have an issue about the podcast, we phone each other straight on the phone. All right, how can we resolve this? How can we do mm. it? And I just... I feel like it needs to be applied to your to your marriage as well. I know emotions can get involved as well in your marriage, but even this attempt to kind of have that have that kind of outlook where you just say, "All right, you know what? Any problems come up, let's sit down, let's hash it out, let's get it, let, let, let's get it out, let's sort it out." Do you know what I'm saying? And it might be the next day when you both can talk about it. It might be you know whatever two days later. But just so you have it in your head, like, you know what, we're going to sort this out regardless kind of thing, I think is important. I, I, no, I think scary. what you're saying is, is important as well, but definitely there's not one fix all. And that's the mm. problem with conflict, right? Mm. Um, sometimes you're trying to apply your method to what mm. you think it should be done. And so um, there's a documentary I watched about Alex Ferguson in it. Mm. And they said, um, I'm not really a Man U fan, so it's not that deep. But they were like saying, uh, Love, don't, he don't, was put don't put slander, don't put slander on the He's on the board today, you know. He's on it today, he's on it. He's on fire today. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't put no slander, bro. <laughs> but I, I, I rate him because he, he said, he said the, most, the most important thing about management is managing people. In it. So he was like, the way he manages Eric Cantona, it's completely mm. different to the way he'll mm. manage like some of these other teams. And, and and that was in order to get the best out of them, isn't it? Because mm. for him, he's like, okay, if I treat this person like this, I treat this person like that, I'm going to get the best. And I think sometimes what happens is in, in, in a marriage is that we take for granted that we're really close to them. So actually we can tend to be very harsh to that same person that we're very close to because we might mm. take for granted that that's my partner, in it? She's going to be there, ride or die. Whereas we don't, we may not necessarily place that sort of callousness or when I say callousness, like just kind of like whatever, if it was like our business part, because we think, oh, we've got to treat them in a particular way to try and manage that relationship. And I feel like that's, we should manage our home relationship the most because you say a word out of anger to your wife, believe me, the thing could come up 10 years later, you know, it's just like, it, like, it lingers. Oh, lingers. you know, yeah, you know, you said that. It about, <laughs> that is like, it, it could be mad for you to mm, ever get, yeah. you know, past mm, that. Do you understand? Yeah. And, and, and for me, I, I, I can only talk about me. So for me, I'm, I'm more of a like, I, I tend to, I can kind of keep things to myself. I don't necessarily have to lash out or anything, but 
I can get to a point where it's like, yeah, you're taking a mic now and then boom, it just all comes through. And then I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. And, you know, that sometimes has had a, a great impact in terms of like the relationship moving forward. It's kind of mm. put a, a wall up. So first thing you're just saying good morning and then you might do, you know what's where you get you get you're both in the corridor and you're just just trying to mm. ask <laughs> kind of being yeah. You don't want to ever say good morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning yeah. properly. You're saying mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, then, and, then, <laughs> and then you're just like <laughs> you might slam that door on the way out, you know what I'm <laughs> So and, and that that's like I think that was my young mentality to, to kind of like just, just like oh, look, let me just get through the day kind of thing. Mm. But the longer you leave something to marinate, you know, the more it sets in. And so mm. It's so hard to kind of like bridge the gap again if you let something go on for longer. Um, yeah, it's it's true, you know. Because you you said you said something just now, which which really resonates, you know. And it's about the the, and the Cantona Ferguson thing just now. Understanding, yeah, people's point of view and understanding that they're different. So I feel like the better way to deal with it is to understand what. If I do this thing that's going to be annoying, what is it that they're going to come back with? You know, yeah, I'm not doing yeah. it intentionally, but mm. what is it that I'm doing? You know, I think there's no there's no point in being in a long marriage and you're not actually learning about each other along the way. You know, I when so. I look at my parents, like they've been married 30 100%. plus years, right? I like to think how much do they really know about each other in that in that time. There must be so much they know about each other. You know, but yet conflict still arises, right? So mm. I think you know there is something around understanding who your partner is, not just what, how you approach something, and the, you know, something that's not annoying to you, it doesn't have to be annoying to them. No, understand who they are as a person think, uh, yeah, and I'm, say, do I you know what, right. okay, cool. Yeah, I might, but, you know, it makes sense to try and avoid some of those things. Because if you're someone who's really nitpicky, mm, I know- I think, we, I I think know we place a bit too, yeah. I think we place a bit too much emphasis on um, how women are in general, how men are in general. And there's not Instead enough of understanding of the person. In, who is that individual? What is the yes. individual? I think that's, I think that's key. All down, I think that's key. All down, to, all down to the individual. You've got to learn your partner. Because the other thing you said just now is around... Well, actually, I don't think... You've, I think we spoke separate. I think we spoke separately about this. But this is about... You might be annoyed at something. But sometimes the advice you're getting to try and resolve this conflict... It's got... My would, days. Would never... This would never help. This would never actually help in this household. Mm. It's upside this would, this down, would, bro. This it's upside <laughs> down. It, it might it might work for someone who's not in a in a serious relationship or someone who's you know a bit of a rocky relationship. But in this household, that's not going to fly. And if you're oh, taking God. that from a if you're taking that from your nearest and dearest, and actually because you you know because I trust Ryan, I'm like, no, I'm going to try. I'm going to try what Ryan says. Mm. That might not work in my house. And actually, I'm now just I'm just making things mash up in my house because I'm taking outside advice, which is not even going to be helpful. Not for this marriage. So then, I think uh, I think if you're gonna take advice, though, at least take it from people who are a little bit qualified to give you that advice. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm like I'm so blessed to where I've got a group of friends who are in doing all different kinds of things in life, and I can chat to about between them. I can probably chat to them about anything. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I know there's certain friends that I'm not gonna come to with my serious marriage problems because not. the advice I want, they could possibly not give it to me. That everyone's entitled that for me, everyone's entitled to an opinion, but how many people are qualified? That's a, that's that's what I'm asking. How many people are qualified to give opinions? And I think just because someone's your best friend or whatever they are, doesn't mean that you should go to them for every single bit of advice because they may not they may not be qualified. They just may not be qualified <laughs> to give you the advice that you need. If I you wanted to learn, about, bro, if I wanted to learn about how to get rich, am I going to go to Warren Buffett or am I going to go to the homeless man on the side of the, the street? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to go to the people who I've seen that they're where I want to be or they're similar to where I am right now. So they're going through similar things to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I think that needs to be taken on board, man. I think people people can take advice some people can take advice with a pinch of salt and just be like kind of mo like modify it to their own kind of understanding and there's others that just take advice and like oh you know what because i respect that person that advice must be what i need to run with <laughs> i'm saying and then they it's end up applying that and it's not the one 
you guys are touching on some really good things because mm. um so 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 one of the things my, my pastor said because I have to bring that in now is mm. he said there's two things in that about conflict. He said first thing is something happens mad in your house, don't tell no one. And mm. and, and his logic was the reason why is because as human beings, the one thing that we don't have the luxury of is to forget. Mm. And so there might be scenarios where you might just like little joke things that you might just get a bit of like perspective on it. But if something mad's happened in your house, you like be careful who you tell. He's like, first thing, you don't really want to tell your parents in it because mm. if you tell them, they're not gonna ever forget. And you might you will forgive your wife, yeah, but they yes. will never forget that thing. So that thing is hanging over her. And even when you're trying to fight for her. It's, it's dead they, they're like nah that's the one that gets up yeah. and yeah they've you ticked understand? off like they're like yeah that's another check against <laughs> you're <laughs> you're <laughs> you're I, knew, I knew that one was a problem <laughs> <laughs> so he was like he was like if anyone he was like seek someone with good counsel and if you're ever going to say anything and he was like always kind of go with this is what I done Come mm. with that approach first, isn't yes. it? Because we're always too quick to talk about what she done. This is what I done in the situation. What do you think? Kind of mm. get a perspective from that. And then the second thing that he said was, which I believe 100%, and if you actually assess it, is that most conflict that happens in marriage is because of a third party. Mm. And I'm like, mad. And it's because of, it could be something super like, but why did you, why did you do that? Or why did you give that to that, that person? Or, and it's just like, oh, yeah. and it's like literally, if you let if you let third party things come in between your relationship, it's long because the person don't even know that they're the cause of your ruckus, and it could be from your children to your family to maybe people that are your business partners or friends or whatever. And 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 he was he, the, the logic is if a situation comes through, you shouldn't let that situation come in between. You should kind of like hopefully, and I know this sounds bare for it. For, theoretical but I'll bring it home he's like you should be able to push that situation in front of you you both come together and be like okay how are we going to tackle this issue in it so it could be mm-hmm. something silly like um, spending too much money on food and so like you know the, the first instinct could be to just tackle the person who does the food shopping isn't it you, that that could be your first thing to do. You're, you're gonna be you're gonna badger the person who does the food shopping, and, and then it could be like, oh, you're so irresponsible. Why? You? But you, you could decide to come together and say, okay, this food thing's not working, and so how are we gonna attack, attack this? Okay, let's put a budget together. Let's think about what we want to eat. Let's think about what we're. Okay, does that mean we have to court? And like, I know it sounds bare fluffy what I'm saying, but with maturity and with age and marriage, you can resolve conflicts a lot easier. Um, without letting things come in between you but definitely who you go to and I find it so weird that people will go to people that are not married for advice of how to deal with a situation are you dumb like <laughs> your your bridging probably wants you to do single life anyway they want you to be coming this out with them and you're, misery and company like, you know wow, what I was and you're like <laughs> you don't have a clue you're just here just worrying about your tutu milk and cereal and like <laughs> in, your, in your fridge that's what that's the, all your worries that you've got or how you're gonna go in the weekend I'm trying to do with real marriage things here innit so it's really important in my view like and, and when I when I've clocked that trust me I protect I protect myself from third party misbehaviors, man. Hundred percent, because most married people want other married people to do well. Do you know what I'm saying? Hundred percent, yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. Well, you're, you're absolutely and there's a there. there's a lot of, there's a lot of single that don't want married people to do well. I'm not saying all, mm. but as yeah. you said, like some people are not who act like they're happy for you may not be happy for you. So I, I agree with you on that, man. I agree with you on that. I think. I think number one, you know, my parents always said, don't share your problems with everyone anyway. Because no most of them don't care and the other, the rest are happy as you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, that's one of those things. But yeah, if you are going to do that, then do it with people that are qualified to give you mm. the kind of advice you want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think you have to be me, up- Yeah, sorry. Oh. For me, I, I, I don't, I've always thought it doesn't need to be necessarily people that are married. It could be people who have gone through a bad experience with marriage because even they will have some kind of knowledge on what not to do to get divorced mm. or what not to do to to end your relationship. You can take you can take advice from both sides, but just make sure it's someone that's either there or that's been there. You know what I'm saying? That's my mm. thing. 100%. I think that's all part. Of, think... It's all part. It's all part of growing. It's all part of growing. Mm. I think as you grow, you need to 
don't get me wrong, you're going to have friends that you've had from school, college, they're always going to be your friends, but just you're on different paths sometimes, you're on different paths in life, and you may be a, a few steps ahead, and it's not a hierarchy as in like, okay, those who are married are at the top, those who've got five kids are at the top, whatever, it's to do with where you are in that particular part in your life, and just accept, well not accept, try and learn actually, that there are different ways to approach these problems depending on where you are in this part of life. If, you, if you're single, for example, then yeah, you can go through conflict completely different. If you're living with your partner, going through conflict, and you want to stay silent for two, three, four weeks, it eventually becomes very, very, very long. When you've got kids in the house, or when you're having to deal with the kids and you're trying to put a, a good, good spin on it for the kids, that again can be very very long you want to try and deal with that at source and that's why i come back to what's your actual, what's your actual strategy about dealing with dealing with a conflict where are you even having these conversations so like you know <laughs> are you are, are you having you know where are you having this where are you having this conflict conversation is it is it a an essay a massive scroll of whatsapp messages where you're just firing it away mm. i can say i'm guilty sometimes and i've done that i can say to you that i've flurry of text messages flurry of whatsapps where i'm i'm trust me i'm dumping what's in my mind on a message i've been there right yeah and equally i'm more than ready for it if i'm standing next to you and i'm like i'm gonna let everything out my brain in one go but again is that articulating that is that articulating that in the right way Mm. and is in the middle of the restaurant the right time to do it probably not but where do you do it? I think that's also something, you know, do you do it where at night? Do you do it? Do you do it when at do you do it? Where, when and where I, do you have these tough conversations? I've always said that. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I, I never think you should do it when you're angry, number one. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think there's a lot of people that have said, don't go to sleep on an argument. And I don't necessarily agree with that because everyone's different, as we've said, in it? Some, some, some people take a good 24 hours to come down from a Depending on what level of argument it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I've mm-hmm. been there when I'm not... Hell, what, if I'm having an argument with you at nine o'clock in the evening, I'm not all of a sudden ready to come back in an hour or two hours when we're going to bed and say, oh, hey, babe, let's, let's make up. Like, I'm, not, I'm not there. <laughs> and you might not be there. So you know what? Give me till tomorrow and I'll come back to you with a different energy to where we can both kind of, you know, attack this properly. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I've always said, like, it's better to be proactive than reactive so if you, if in your head you've got something that's been bugging you not on the not off the back of the argument or just just something in your head that you've just been wanting to speak about I, I, my thing is always to do it when you're in a good place do it when you're at you're at dinner or whatever you are do it when you are watching a movie and you're you are in a good place rather than doing it off the back of an argument where it's like oh yeah and by the way Blah 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 blah. <laughs> I'm saying that, that, that connector is nuts. Trust me. Yeah. And <laughs> by the way, da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that's that's easy for you to say. Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But yeah, as what were you gonna say anyway? No, that? no. I think I think um, what you're saying is completely true. But dare I say it? Quite controversial, you know, because this is dad's divulge, isn't it? What yes. is the man's role? in resolving conflicts. And I think I alluded to this a little bit earlier in the beginning. Mm. Do we, and so it's about cultivating a household, right? And I said, obviously, so I'm going to come from, you know, my, my faith and traditionally, the man is the head of the home. He's not like the slave master or nothing. He's just the head mm. in it. So, so he, he has the vision. That's, that's, that's what the, the head does. And what's so funny is that in a, in a, in a company, the the head of an institution might not necessarily be the smartest, might not necessarily be the one that's actually moving the legs of the company forward, mm. but he has the vision, right? And and he has the strategy and he kind of has the final say in it. Um, and so for him, a good leader is someone that will try and cultivate an environment where his workers can, you know, work and feel valued in it and, and have a good institution where, you know, people want to work for the boss, them mm-hmm. ones where it's not even about the money no more, although the money's nice, but I genuinely want to see this company do good. And so if if we as men are the CEOs of our home uh, or like the, the main guy running the strategy, how much um, effort do we have to think about in terms of, right, so I know that if a conflict happens and I'm angry, uh, what do I do to cultivate an atmosphere in my house where we can resolve it? Because 
arguably, and you might think I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking pants here, but I, I can probably say, having had experience, that it falls on me to make sure that this conflict is resolved. Right? I think you're 100% no ma- right, bro. 100%. Like, no, ma- yeah. no matter how much I feel like I've been begrudged or I feel like maybe I might even be right and even still, even after everything, I might told two, two people, like, yeah, you're right, bro. Like, yeah, no, you're the one that's right. 100%. <laughs> I'm the one living in my house, isn't it? So it falls on me to mm-hmm. cultivate an atmosphere where we can resolve this conflict. And I think that takes a higher level of maturity, which I'm still trying to get there. I'm not there, I'm not 100% there yet because sometimes I can just, all of that fury kind of goes out the window when you're in it. But to think, okay, even if I've had a madness, like you said, even if it's like, yeah, we're not going to resolve it now, but you have to think long-term. This has to be resolved. Okay. And so if something continually, because of your values, causes conflict you need to think about okay how do we align our values and what, what do i what do i mean by values like i might be someone who is time conscious do you understand whereas the, the missus is always late when actually in my household it's probably the opposite to be honest my, my <laughs> wife is more time conscious and i just mm. i just think i got all, i got all day and stuff mm. those things can cause if your values don't align right causes conflict isn't it so I could be on work and think, oh, I can stay on a call for an extra 20 minutes. It's cool. Whereas it's not cool. That's not mm. cool, bro. Like, and <laughs> if you're going somewhere and your wife's like, that's not cool. If I don't rate that value, I've now potentially, I'm I'm the one causing the conflict. So I've got to think, uh, yeah, guys, do you know what? I've actually got to come off this call and actually mm. place value on my household enough to be like, yeah, we can deal with what you're dealing with later, innit? Or, just calling the courtesy, babes. This thing is really hot off the press. I'm going to be ten minutes late. Like, I'm I'm apologising in advance, isn't it? That like, you're trying to manage that so that when you've come out the meeting, if you're going to go out or something, there's that atmosphere where there isn't conflict. And you know what, bro? Sorry, but this is why I compare marriage to running a business because, mm. especially when it comes to men, because this is how we can relate to it. You see what I'm saying? Women will see it from a different point of view, from a more emotional standpoint. But for men, we can relate with these things. Do you see what I'm saying? And as you know what you said that resonated with me is how can I how can I lead, how can I sell my vision to the people in my household? How can <laughs> I and the thing is like all the books I've read about business and leadership and whatever, they all say you are the least important as an owner or CEO or whatever. You are the least important person in that organization. Your job is to make sure everyone around you is happy and you eat last. <laughs> what was that? Everyone. You come last. But can you have what, what, <laughs> what you're saying right now, yeah, to elaborate, is the exact premise of marriage, especially as a husband. Mm. Like, and yeah. so, like, really, I come last. That, but that concept is just foreign today like to say as the husband your job is to serve the household it sounds silly yeah but really but you have to take a one... look from above and, and see the bigger, the bigger picture and that's the bit because... that's, that's the bit yeah that's, that's, the, that's the bit where I was saying do you know what how well do you know your partner because actually mm. I think as men I think as men we do speak a lot about where we're trying to go mm. and what we're trying to do and rightly or wrongly we're saying we're doing it for the greater good of everyone in this house. I don't believe they, I don't believe some partners understand that. I don't believe some wives, girlfriends, I, and, equally up, and equally other way around, it could be some husbands don't understand the vision that sometimes their wife is putting out for them. I think you're, but, I think but, you're right. But, yeah. It's, it's, on, sorry, it's, 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 so, it's, it's so key that if you do have a partner who is more the visionary person, that is, that's their bread and butter. That's something that they're, they're living, breathing, and they, they want nothing more than to see that vision through. And actually, that's what keeps them going. That's what makes them happy. Whether it's getting your child into a certain school, whether it's getting a certain job, whether it's trying to get a promo, whether it's moving to another house, whether mm-hmm. it's actually making this more money in the bank, all the other type of stuff like that. That might be, there might be a hundred steps, hundred mini steps anyway, to get to that vision. And I think, I do think as men, men who are this way, I do think you have to dial it down at times because sometimes the missus doesn't want to hear business, business, business. And you might have a missus who's not interested in all that type of stuff. But if you do have a partner like that, 
it's, imp- it's so important that you respect that this is the type of man or woman mm. that, you, that you have, yeah? And actually, something that's small to you, such as being 20 minutes late, mm. such as not getting back to me about something that you said to me three months ago, because I'm an advanced person, right? Because mm-hmm. I've got this vision, right? I'm thinking about things three months in advance or mm. a year in advance, right? I'm giving you a long run up. So let me tell you now, because the one thing I know you don't like, because I know you so well, is you don't like things last minute. You know, you don't like things last minute and you don't like things just dropped on you. You don't like the, the nosebleed pressure that comes. And I'm like, I need to know now. Right. Mm-hmm. That is something that if you're a person who doesn't mind thinking on the spot, all good. But if you've got a partner who's like, mm, do you know what? It's too much. Respect it. You know, I think I think this is where we have to have, and this is, I think, where the tougher conversations do have to happen. Because like this is where the understanding, this is where a lot of these things come back to, understanding, mm. communication, mm. all of these things. All yeah, of absolutely. these things are valuable. The, the best leaders are the best communicators. Like, you need to be able to translate whatever your, ever mission you're on to your wife. You can't just be on some arrogant, like, woman, I'm doing this for you, you know. <laughs> shut up. Just, just shut up. You know, what? like, you can't be on that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You have you've to, got, if you really want, it. because... This is an organization we're running and the wo- the woman plays a pivotal part. Her, you need to, her to be on board so that she knows where she stands. Whatever whatever kind of situation you're in, everyone needs to be on board. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. Everyone needs to be saying, all right, cool. We believe in that. And whether it's a man or woman, whatever, everyone has to be on board and be able to say, okay, this is where we're going. I, be- I believe in you. You believe in me. Let's go in this direction. You know what I'm saying? If one person's mm. pulling that way, one, pull- one person's pulling the other way, then you know what happens, isn't it? You know, I think it's almost like it's almost like you got to create. So it's weird, like because I know we're talking about business because there's a way that we can mm. really express what we we're can, saying. We can so, relate to it. Yeah. So in a business, you're always going to create a reserve, or you're mm. going to have what I call a risk adverse approach, or you're going to have things in place to what you call like mitigate your risk. So if you have, if you know that something could potentially happen, you put something in place just to hedge that so it don't really happen. You know what I'm saying? So so really. In a relationship, right, and these like it's just the way we're talking. If you set values, right, and or you set particular things in place, right, and conflicts come from misalignment of understanding. By the way, you said this, I said that. What's going on? Or you know, I thought this is what we were doing. You're now doing this. What's going on? That's how conflict happens. I feel like when you have a north star. When I say a, a north star, like you've got something that you both have agreed to work towards as a family, in a relationship, in one year's time, in six months' time, tomorrow, in five years' time, I think, like, all your conflicts as well, when you start kind of, like, saying, okay, actually, but we both agreed this, isn't it? It can kind of squash conflicts as well. Like, I definitely yeah. feel like a lot of times where things have Perhaps. happened and I'm like, you know, we okay, do you know what? We both agreed to do this. So just Bro, it's like, refer- it's, it's like referring back to the contract. Sorry, in line, in line 16, page yeah. 52, you said... <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, no. You signed me, and said this. And that's, you know... Okay, cool. Hands up. <laughs> I'm saying, and that, I said, and that don't even mean it. That doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Nah, of course, have maybe of course. A conversation to say, okay, we might just need to change our, you know, change our approach. visions and goals yeah, now yeah, to and our approach to what we're going to do. But that's the only way you can you can have it. The only thing is right, and I think it's what it's what Stu preaches in it. It's delivery in it. Like so, it's the ability to know the person you're speaking to, and kind of paint that picture that they want to see. Do you understand? You might paint a picture and your wife sees, you know, X and that, and you show it to someone else, they see Y, right? But you just need to communicate in a way that, you know, oh. that your wife is going to understand. Listen, people say, I always say, people say communication, but communication is one of those skills that can take you to different heights. Do you know what I'm saying? In all aspects of life. And my thing is, you can only imagine my communication skills as a 17 year old teenage boy who's just finding out about the world. Some of the things that my missus said that I've said to her, I cringe, bro, because I'm like, me, like, could that read, could that read have come out of my mouth? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> like, what? And you know, you know what's mad? You don't, you, you don't even remember it. That's the remember. madness of that. And she's like, at 17, on this day, you were wearing this, you said that to me. And I'm like, yeah. Me, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you talking That's a conflict about? in itself. You're like, yeah. nah, you're lying. You're I'm like, like no, 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 not me. But I know she wouldn't <laughs> lie, and I know like 
I look at that and think, oh, yo, the way you spoke back then to, to compare to the way you are now, this is the reason why your relationship is in a different place to, than to what it was. Because it wouldn't have lasted if I didn't adapt the way I speak to her or I could try and communicate. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, yeah, it was a bit of a joke think, back then. I think we men as well, we don't really listen, innit? And that's what communication is about, actually. This is it. Like, like the, listening the more than speaking. Important- Bro, it's the most important part of communication, and I think we're kind of headstrong to say, "But what do you know?" Like, kind of more like, mm. "What are you talking about?" Like, mm. like we're trying to go here, whereas mm. like the engine, I think it's just understanding each other's strengths, weaknesses, Fact. and it's back to this whole business of opportunities and threats in it. Like, if I know that, for example, and this is just a, a live example because what I want to do is not try and expose my household, but <laughs> I, I remember like early on, I said to my wife, "Look." If you deal with your parents and I deal with my parents, then if anything ever happens, me shutting down my parents is going to be easier, isn't it? Like, it's never going to... Like, if we have a disrespect thing, we're just going to resolve it and you know how you deal with your parents. Like, I don't ever want to be in a place where I'm trying to shut down your parents or vice versa. <laughs> you understand? Like, yeah. like it, because it just can't work, innit? Not, not that I'm saying we don't have a good relationship, innit? But we set that on from early. So now that can't really cause a madness in my household. Like, I, I, I potentially can't have someone come in to say, why do you talk to my dad like that? Are you, are you mad, bro? Like, mm-hmm. do you understand? Mm-hmm. I, like, I can't. It's because we've set those boundaries in place, isn't it? Whereas, likewise as well, I protect my wife from my parents. So if I ever sniff that my mum's trying to move a bit, I'm like, mum, yo, like, or dad, like, mm, do you understand? Because mm-hmm. I'm in a you place to do certain things in the bud. Yeah, yeah. but quickly. 100%, but 100%. If, we, if we've not agreed that, if we haven't aligned on our values to say, right, this is what we want to do in our household, <laughs> it could just be so reckless to the place where, do you understand? Like, her dad might just say something and I'm like, huh? you know what? I think to the normal person, a lot of this might sound a bit kind of, maybe over over the top because it's like it's in a lot of detail a lot of things you have to take care of but my thing is like you've chosen this person to be with for the rest mm. of your life yeah and you want yep. that you want that journey to be as smooth as possible why mm. wouldn't you communicate the finest details why wouldn't you iron out the things that could potentially go wrong you you know you can't forecast everything you can't you cannot like there's going to be things that just come up but why wouldn't you make that effort to to cover all bases kind of thing you know what I'm saying like you need let's be honest we've all known each other for years but not one of us will affect each other's lives the way our wives will <laughs> you know what I'm saying mm, mm, 100%, 100%. <laughs> that's the thing that this, this not- person <laughs> she's with me most of the time she more than anyone in my life really other than my kids can affect my mood day to day you know what I'm saying yeah. So yeah. why wouldn't I put my effort in to try and communicate and try and get along with this woman to the best of my ability? Some men, some men yeah. have better relationships with their with their mandem than they have with their own wife. I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying that one. That one I've never. I've, I, let me <laughs> stop you right there. Right that bit I've never understood. And you know what? I've seen that happen a lot in some of the older generation as well. Just in terms mm. of like, you see them, you just think that relationship looks a bit unstable but it's been there for like 30 35 years how mm. because you can mm. see how he is when you see them speaking to each other mm. and like you, it's like you said right at the beginning right now, i look at certain things and i think i don't want that to be me you know mm. my, my my dad's always been someone who's not that he, he's he chats people but i think it's more he always phrased it as like university of life like let me teach you certain things and when you look outside here's what i'm explaining to you and I'll be honest, there's certain times he's tried to teach me certain things and it's probably, it's probably been too early. And I thought, hmm, doesn't really make sense. Then the penny drops years later. I'm seeing what he's talking about. And mm. yeah, when it comes to some of these relationships, you start thinking to yourself, do you know what? Hmm, you, you need to know the person properly. You need to know, you need to understand what it's like. And you've got to avoid certain things along the way. You have mm. to. You have to avoid I- things along the way. I think it's key for people to definitely clock that you will always continue trying to resolve conflict as long as you live um, with your partner. And I think obviously once you realise a method where it can be done amicably or in a place where, you know, you can just be like, okay, cool, let's move on. Because you're going to learn new things. People change. People, you know, like have new perspective in life. You know, you don't want to just be caught in the same spot for all your life. I think a lot of people do conflict avoidance 
which for me is never healthy because you avoid do you, conflict. Do you think that's because they, they haven't seen conflict being resolved before? 100%. So, my, so, my, so, so my, my, my thing is, yeah, that we're talking about conflicts in a marriage, right? But let's face it, before we were married, we had a girlfriend, yeah? Mm. And who, we took, who we took seriously and we decided, you know what, this is the person I want to spend my life with. I feel that some of these things to help people along the way should be done a bit earlier as well. Like, mm. for, for I don't me, think I just they think should, you know. You don't think I'm so? Opposite, you know? No, I feel like not, not like not like not like full like breakdowns and stuff. But I think in terms of like arguments, because argument, you know, now arguments can just throw into right, like you said, we're just yeah. gonna break up. When really, yeah. I feel like part of trying to get on that journey is how you deal with conflict, because it's like, like you said, it's gonna be there forever. You're gonna deal with it whether you have got no kids, where you bring kids. I don't know. It's one of those things where this is why us men sometimes we bounce from different women to different women because. We all go through the same phases, like meet a woman, honeymoon period, shit starts getting peak where you have to now communicate with this woman now. It's past the, it's past the stage <laughs> where you think she's nice, she thinks you're nice, and it's all going rosy. It's, it's a, at a stage now where, do you know what? I have to actually take, I have to actually understand her now. I have to understand mm. what this woman doesn't like, what she does like. I have to understand how, how do I get through to her? How do I sell her my vision? How do I do all these things? Do you know what I'm saying? And I think when it gets to that stage, that's crunch time. And most men say, she's just chatting shit, bro. I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm, think, I'm not I, involved. I think there's certain things that if you argue about when you're not married, it's enough to break you up. But when you are married, it's not enough to get you divorced Fact. and I think Fact, and I, that's just that's my stance I think that's the balanced stance and I, I I know it straight away certain things where if it was like in a relationship I'd have been like mm, I'm gone but in a marriage you have to fit, work it out and I think sometimes that's what men, men may do we shy away from the responsibility uh, and the accountability of resolving things um, and it's easier for or we think as men it's easier until we start to get to the age if not you're not married that you're, you're now You've got bare bruises because you've just been taken on different issues, issues, issues. Mm. Whereas if you get into the marriage and you just kind of stick to that kind of commitment, as long as it's healthy to your mind and body, by the way, um, mm. <laughs> you know, um, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to figure out the way to kind of get over it. And it comes with age, you know, like, you know, there's certain things that in year one, you just never would have resolved in the same way you did in year five. Right. But it comes with growth. And I think it's both ways. Um, that growth, isn't it? But I ultimately do feel like if that, if the household is on fire and it's on, it's on flames, it's up to the man to kind of figure out how he wants to move forward. And I'm not saying he has all the power to resolve things. All I'm saying is that he has the power to try and cultivate how he wants his house to run. Doesn't mean that, you know, he's going to do it, yeah. but it's that power of persuasion you're talking about. You know, you, the only person that's going to persuade your wife is you. Mm. You know, no, no, no one else, none of her friends, none of her parents, no one that's going to talk to her. It's the actions that you take that's going to make her think, mm. do I want to change yeah. or not? Do you know what? Yeah. When I, when I, when I got with my um, missus, it was very much about love. Like, I love you, you love me. Yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I recently had a conversation with my missus and I was like to her, because my dad, his thing, always, he's drummed into my head. He's like, listen, why? You see that when the respect... <laughs> When the respect is gone in the marriage or the relationship, that's when it's time for you to bounce. And I said to my missus the other day, what do you think is more important? Do you think it's love or respect? And we broke it down and we discussed it and whatever. And I was, I, we came to the conclusion that respect over everything kind of conquers. This is what I'm saying. Because I think love has too many variables. Love is... You can love someone and hate them at the same time. You can love someone that's no good for you. You can love someone that, as I said, you hate, innit, at the end of the day. But respect is like, I think that's where I'm at with my missus at the moment. It's like, of course we love each other, but it's like that respect, like, it's different levels now. Do you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say certain things to you in a certain way. I wouldn't do certain things to you. Like, it's just, what do you think about that? What do you, what do you think about the whole love over respect or respect over love, I should say? To be honest with you, I could, I could I could spend another hour. That's another hour podcast, you know. Like you have to write me <laughs> podcast. Do love, love, or, love or respect R E S V. So here's my stance on marriage and love, right? And so 
it's about breaking down what love is first. And I think what you said is true, but I'm going to kind of spin it on his head. Mm. What is love? So a lot of people have this euphoria, like euphoria of like, mushy, mushy, I love you and stuff. And that's fantastic. Mm. But actually the breakdown of, of love, right, is, is, is an action. So to love something or to love someone is to is is to is to do. And so one of the biggest things in my faith is like God so loved the world that he gave. And so in marriage, my stance to marriage is that if I really love my wife, my 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 I'm gonna give. And so here's why respect is really important in marriage, is because you have to give it. Mm. Yeah. And that's why you you can say yeah, to your facts. wife, the one thing that's held us together is respect. Why? It's because you are consciously making a decision to give and that is love for me Uh, that's what love is love love is making that conscious decision to Uh, show up every day and then we can go that step further and say i'm going to love you unconditionally respective of how you act Uh, if you start acting up today i'm not going to stop stop loving uh, you and i'm not going to stop respecting you either do you understand uh, and when you can now give an unconditional love it becomes a standard that your wife can come back to because what it means is that even if she misbehaves and you haven't misbehaved, she'll respect you because you're like, yeah, even when I was kind of doing a mad one still, you was, you, you was still a man and you still remained my husband. And mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. a level of respect that comes Tired. from making a choice. Do you understand? When you make, it's everything we do is a choice. You can decide to just not really give a, you know, give two hoots. That's your choice. And the moment that happens is your moment your marriage starts to break down. And so I definitely resonate with the whole respect thing. I think that respect comes from a place of I've decided to, boom, I've decided to. And so every single time, if you imagine, if you say you love someone, I kind of replace that with I, I, I'm going to do instead of yeah. I love you I'm going to do you know so yeah. I, I'm going to wake up early and get the kids ready I'm going to yeah. I'm going to go to work and try and provide for the house I'm going to yeah. um, I'm going to come out with you when you're going out with the outing with the boys and stuff and and if yeah. you say you need to go out I'm happy to take the boys on because I um, I've, I'm, I've made a conscious decision to do out of love do you understand and when, when we do that and, and ultimately with the bedrock of respect for me that overcomes this whole mushy feeling of love. Like, because we can have that whole momentary, I love you, I love you stuff. Yeah. But when the love fades, all that, all that particular love don't, mushy love, feeling. Listen, love don't, love don't just, save no relationships, but I'm Yeah, it's true. No way. You put that, you put that I'm so well. You. Honestly, you, you yeah, put that really you, well, because you, it's true. Yeah, listen, to do the act. Gonna, yeah, this, he's done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> <listen. laughs> No, it's true, you know, because... What are you saying? Yeah, bro? yeah. Hey. Bro, come like... Hey, bro, you're MC in there, bro. Trust me, man. If I could pull that one, I'm telling you. It would have pulled that a long time ago. Straight. If, it's do if, actions. If it's people, do actions. If you ask people who are, like, not together no more, got divorced or they're separated, the one thing they'll tell you is, yeah, we just didn't do. And that's the reality of it, isn't it? Like, and so... Mm, yeah. Ryan, uh, Stu, you both know when you've made a decision to do out of respect, isn't it? Like, I'm going to continue, in it? But you know there, and no. you, mm. Sorry, go on, sorry. No, but you also know when you've decided not to do. It's just like, it's long. Do you know what, <laughs> yeah. Bro, like, you know, since we've been doing this podcast, obviously me and Stu have been doing more research into the whole marriage and relationships, babies, well, all of that stuff, do you know what I'm saying? And the one thing that I've realised is that, well, the facts are there is that most people get divorced because of a lack of respect and understanding than infidelity and it's mad because when you have conversations with other guys you say oh listen the only thing that i'm gonna get divorced for is if my missus cheats on me and uh, you know it's it's proven that it's not actually it's not true just most men yeah most people are getting separated because that respect bro that understanding yeah. just gets lost and it's like you know what Mm, I can't. I can't do it no more after that. It's when they give. It's when they. It's when they. It's when they give up. You know. And I think. Yeah. I think yeah. One thing. I, one thing I always talk about is you. And this is where I kind of, even though you might have slightly disagreed, I think this is where I think like some of these traits and things you do start from early on. So when you're kind of going out, like I feel like you have to show each other, like you said, more doing. It's all to do with your actions. I think. You've, got, you've actually, you've, you've, you've actually got, to, you've actually, actually got to do something to make it happen. Like it's not just kind of fall in place. It's a bit well, like when people Ryan, say, is, "Oh, yeah. it's gone." It's like, mm. go, 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 go. No, I was going to say this is why what your your stats is hundred percent correct because if, even cheating yet is like a is like a branch of a tree. The cheating mm. comes from a, a deep root of 
lack of respect. Like anyway. So actually, yeah. even even cheating is just like it's just a, or maybe fighting or hitting or whatever you do, mm. it's you're mm. acting out mm. from a place of lack of respect. And actually, when you root everything back, it's down to how much respect and how much um, doing do you have for, for your your partner, your wife? And I think that you know, once that goes out the window, as much as we say uh, blah 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 blah, we want to have a level of value of respect from our partner. Do you understand? That's the, that's the that's the reality of it. And and if you don't Facts. got that, oh, it's long, man. Trust me, it's very long. <laughs> the thing's done up. <laughs> it's done. And most marriages done are done halfway through before they've even locked off. So someone's been together for 10 years and they divorce after mm. that. They've been divorcing for five years anyway. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's it's down with slope, slope, innit? I think it's important as well. Like, for us and for all the men that are listening, that, that are around our age and whatever, to know that I think in this podcast we've said all the right things we've said anyone listening would think these guys are the professionals at <laughs> but just as it's hard for us to implement like it's not I know all the right things to do but it's about implementing them it's about if if my if I had an argument with my missus right after this podcast how much would I remember what we've just said do you know what I'm saying yeah, and I'm- it's making that conscious effort to remember yeah. all of these things all the time because we would do it for a lot of other things you know what I'm saying but do sometimes work. yeah do it for work yeah. do it for you know you want a promotion you remember everything you want to you move forward like what? you do all that but how many <laughs> times yeah. yeah how mm. many times do you remember it for our own marriage and I'll put my hands up like it's something that I have to work at every single day to get better at. you know what I'm saying it's something I have to consciously say to myself cool how do you become? So, so, how do you become better? How do you how do you approach these things better? Here's one thing I would say, and, and even to challenge you, know, and, and it'll be for myself and everyone watching. From everything that we spoke, take one thing, one just one little thing. Don't even have to be mega. One thing, just take that one thing and say to yourself, "All right, from tomorrow," because everyone wants to do ten years. From tomorrow, mm. I'm going to start implementing this. And even for myself, like even now, I'm going to I'm mm. going to chip in. I'm going to say. Right, I'm gonna make oh, a conscious decision. And so is my new, and is my new mentor, bro. What are you talking about? Bro? I'm gonna be <laughs> phoning you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. Uh, Pasta, bro. Pasta, uh, hey, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but real talk, like, because I think, I, I think in life here yeah, we have all these feelings, but everyone should just take one thing, like, just don't try to move the whole world today in it. Just take that one mm, thing facts. and say, all right, what am I gonna do from tomorrow? And I'm going to commit to it. Like, just take a month and assess, okay, how have I been doing? So, for example, I said, um, I'm going to learn to ask my wife how I can help her for the week, isn't it? Mm. Because things can get stressful, can get on top, and we, and we forget to think, you know, figure out, okay, what can I do? So I said, what can I do for you this week that, that can help? Isn't it? And it could be something small as, oh, just make sure that the shopping's done or whatever. Okay, well, or just something... You know, this is what you want because if I try to tell you what I can do for you, it's not going to be helpful. And so, mm. when she tells me that, that's my one task to try and do for that week. And then at the end, I'll mm. say, "Was I able to do it? Was it helpful?" And just that one little thing, it comes back to that whole doing is out of a place of trying to, you know, show you my love in it. Like because mm. I might try to think, "Oh, I'm going to work," and and that's me showing you love. Whereas all you want me to do is wash the dishes. Mm that to you could be the level of love that will just turn everything on his head to the place where even yeah. if we wanted to have conflict, you're like, nah, this guy, he did try still, you know, maybe mm. it's not as clean as I wanted it, but he's trying, <laughs> isn't it? And just take that on. Everyone, everyone's watching, take one thing, take it on, and yeah, let's just try and make a difference in, in our in our immediate worlds before trying to change the world out there. Everyone's there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my <laughs> thing. Man. Thanks, man. No, no, I'm with you, man. Advice. I'm with you. I'm with you. But listen, Ads, it's been mm. a it's been a pleasure, bro. It's been a pleasure mm. having you on. You just gems, gems my guy. <laughs> gems upon gems. <laughs> bro, are you sure no, you want a, are you sure you want a jewel in your past life, bro? Uh, Trust me. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, man. You've been giving it to them today, bro. I'm telling you. But yeah, it's it's, it's, it's all of us, isn't it? it just, this is the power of conversation, isn't it? It was the, Yeah. Yeah, mm. no, it's true, man. It's true. But yeah, for um ads, thanks a lot for coming on again. Um, 
let people know what you got going on, where they can follow you, you know, all of that good uh, stuff. Yeah, so um, at, at Circulate um, underscore on Instagram, um, I'll be putting some more stuff out. But if you're ever on LinkedIn or ever, just Circulate with an E, so C E R, late to like Circulate, but with an E instead of an I. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff to just help like our community help people and I believe it it's just small steps so you might not see nothing bigger now but one day you'll see that name and lights and it'll be doing something special facts. so yeah man that's where I'm at man thanks bro thanks Amen. Mm. well yes guys thanks for tuning in for another episode please 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 like share and subscribe you know we're on we need to get to a thousand subscribers we're on the we're on the road so please help us just you know click that subscribe and like button and that'll be good still. But um, yeah, guys, until next time, we're out.